What you see here has absolutely nothing to do with the topic of today's video. I didn't really feel like being on camera today, and I needed some B-roll to talk over for my intro and conclusion, and I figured footage of fall garden seed starting was as good as anything else. Anyway, when you garden in a relatively small space like I do, sometimes you have to make hard calls regarding what plants get to take up valuable real estate in your vegetable plot. Sometimes a plant or variety gets 86 because you simply don't like eating it. Rapini, I'm looking at you. Other times, a plant is struck from the roster because as much as you might like it, you just can't get it to do well enough to justify the space and resources it requires. So, after careful consideration, here are five plants and or varieties that are indefinitely out of regular rotation in my garden. Stick around to the end of the video for three new-to-me veggies I grew this year that earned themselves a regular spot in my garden. First up is a determinate cherry variety I tried for the first time this year called Baxter's Bush Champion. At first it seemed like this offering from Burpee was going to be a winner, as the fairly compact plants were prolific producers. Additionally, the flavor was fine, nothing to really write home about, but a decent standard red cherry tomato flavor. The big issue was the texture. These tomatoes have very thick skins, so eating them raw wound up being a bit of an unpleasant experience. Since there are far better cherry and grape tomato varieties out there, these ones get the axe. I swear I don't have it in for burpee, but this hybrid hot pepper variety of theirs just fell a little flat with me. They are advertised as having the flavor of a habanero with the heat level of a Tabasco, but most of mine simply tasted like bell peppers. I can't fault the variety for the lack of heat, as overly mild hot peppers are a weird and ongoing problem in my garden. The plants didn't produce all that well for me, and at the end of the day it seemed as if they were trying to be both a bell pepper and a hot pepper, while doing neither particularly well. Additionally, the seeds are relatively expensive, running about $5 for 20 seeds. I don't know why, but I've long struggled to grow regular old bell peppers. I don't know if the hot, dry summers of the Sacramento Valley simply aren't ideal for bell peppers, or if I just suck at growing them. But after several seasons of disappointing pepper harvests, I'm ready for a break. Instead, I'm going to research into other types of sweet peppers I can try starting next season and see if something else does a little better for me in this climate while still providing that same general flavor profile that you get from a regular bell pepper. This year, I tried growing two different varieties of true cucumber, and as in most years, the results were meh. Cukes just don't do well when daytime highs are regularly in the 90s or hotter which in my region can occur as early as late May. When temps go up, blossom drop and fruit abortions become common, and production really tanks. Now, by contrast, Armenian cucumbers love extreme heat and typically produce so well through the worst of the summer that we have a hard time keeping up with them. Now, while Armenian cukes are technically a variety of muskmelon, their flavor is, in my opinion, indistinguishable from standard cukes. Now, they are a little bit drier than the salad cukes most people are accustomed to, but that means they're great for pickling as well as for eating raw. Moving forward, I think I'm just gonna stick to growing the Armenian cukes and cut the others out. It absolutely kills me to make this call, as sprawling vines loaded up with plump squash and pumpkins are one of my favorite parts of gardening. Unfortunately, I have to face the fact that winter squash with a vining habit just don't do that well for me. Like all cucurbits, extreme heat does a real number on winter squash, often causing pollination issues leading to fruit abortion. Because our summers tend to get hot early, production on these slow developing plants usually takes a real nosedive as the temperature climbs. Vining squash are also tremendously hungry plants that can fairly quickly deplete a raised bed of essential nutrients, making fertilization necessary on a regular basis. Finally, the plants themselves are unruly, requiring large trellises if they're going to be stopped from overtaking the entirety of a backyard garden. If I'm honest with myself, bush habit winter squash are a much better fit for my garden. They tend to yield far faster than their vining brethren, sometimes in as little as 75 days, meaning plants can be set in the garden as soon as all frost danger has passed, and the plants will set fruit before the extreme heat sets in. I'm often harvesting bush variety winter squash in early July. Now onto some varieties we tried this year for the first time that have secured a more or less permanent spot in the rotation, starting with Orient Express Eggplant. Eggplant has historically been a veggie I've struggled a bit to grow. This year, I gave Orient Express a try due to their purported heat tolerance. 
While it did take them a while to start producing, by late July they were churning out an abundance of small 6-8 to eight inch fruits. While I would like to find a larger fruiting eggplant that works in our climate, Orient Express definitely has a spot in our garden next summer. So, a supplier I ordered tomato seeds from earlier this year threw in a packet of Anaheim chili seeds, either as a bonus or by accident, and I decided to give them a try. Anaheim chilies are supposed to be mildly spicy, but ours were not. Instead, the numerous chilies produced by each plant were a great substitute for green bell peppers, which consistently underperformed for us. I can definitely see growing these again. While it would be nice if at least a few of them produced that mild 600 Scoville or so units that they're supposed to, uh, even without any of the heat, like I said, this could be one of the, uh, the replacements for regular green bell peppers that I've been looking for in recent years. I've been making a point of it to try growing at least one new tomato variety every year. This year, one of my new varieties was the Virginia Sweets, which was a definite winner. This indeterminate heirloom slicer produced giant yellow fruits that were pleasantly but not overwhelmingly sweet. They lacked the acidic tang of most tomato varieties, widening the flavor profile of the summer's tomato selection. These will join Cherokee Purples as a go-to heirloom slicer for us. And honestly, this is such a beautiful, visually striking tomato that even if the flavor was underwhelming, I would probably still grow these for their looks alone. And as an added bonus, the Virginia Sweets is a very low seed tomato, and some of the smaller ones turned out were completely seedless. The Virginia Sweets that we were unable to eat fresh, say on uh, tomatoes and burgers and salads, etc., uh, they were great in fresh salsas. Uh, they made a great addition to tomato sauce. Uh, and thick slices, uh, dehydrated to just the right point, uh, actually made a really good fruit leather for snacking. Uh, it turned out to be a very uh, a sweet kind of a, uh, a dried tomato. And I'm honestly not usually a fan of any kind of dried tomatoes just to eat, uh, but these were a notable exception to that rule. It's admittedly a bit hyperbolic to firmly state I'll never grow any of the previously mentioned veggies again, but I'm definitely at a point where for some of these, I need a break from beating my head against the wall trying to get them to do well in my climate. But who knows, maybe someday I'll be hungry for a challenge again and I'll want to see if I can, you know, make a massive green bell pepper or red bell pepper harvest work in the Sacramento Valley. Or maybe I'll own a nice huge chunk of land someday that uh, allows room for a giant pumpkin patch of sprawling vining squash uh, everywhere. And, uh, you know, that'll about do it for today. And until next time, let's hope it all doesn't die.